This is Curtis coming at you from Ace Per Head Studios once again. Talk about NFL 2021 season. Had a lot of stuff I wanted to do this week. <sighs> kind of a bumpy week with technical stuff. Uh, you know, we're getting it together. Going to get back to my fins. Uh, still try to get some of the yellow stuff I wanted out. But I want to work on a different format because I truly believe that all viewers matter and some I, I was trained as a teacher some viewers uh, some students I was trained at they learn and like one way and others learn and like the other way and a, a good teacher a good uh, bringer of information needs to consider all uh, as equals so I'm going to do a cliff notes and then we're going to do the deep dives they um, Ross effect, there was like 48 minutes long. That's a deep dive. This one is going to be a cliff notes, and I'm going to talk about things that I will then expand on other places. For those who want expansion on those uh, opinions and ideas and information that I bring, they'll be there. So this is the cliff notes version, okay? Two articles came out, and they came out after I did my Ross effect video. And some people were like, I thought you said there's going to be good news. Where's the good news? Where's the good news? <laughs> and I would be like that too. And I, I did the video prior. I didn't want to redo it, obviously, because it was a ton of work. Um, but I was said I was going to have an addendum, like an add-on. And this is going to be a two news, uh, not one, two. Two news items came out uh, about Brian Flores. First one, it was a shock. I was like, ooh. Second one, like, it was over my head, you know. It didn't really make sense. But then it did. So the first one was, it was like Sunday afternoon or Sunday night. I uh, forgot who reported it. You can go check it. it. You just type it in and you'll find it. And it said that uh, Brian Flores had preferred Herbert over Tua. Not that he didn't like Tua. He preferred him. He preferred taller, bigger, uh, and quarterbacks with no injury history. That did not come out like haphazardly. The article said that people around him, many people around him, had been saying since the draft, this is what Flores wanted. But now it's getting shine. It's like, oh, that's weird. That's, you know, that's, that's weird. Then the second one, I can't find, I hope there's some like really savvy viewers out there that can find the article for me. It didn't make sense, but it basically said, and I might get some of the information wrong because it wasn't important at the time. But then when it became important, I was like, ding, I couldn't find it. Yeah, go figure. So it said that Brian Flores' agent was like a real powerful agent and him and Trace Armstrong, there was like a merger, I think of like two companies and they were going to like create a powerful agency for like GMs and coaches. And this came out two days later. As I said in my other video, when you're in a public eye, you have a staff of people and they create narratives for you. They basically give you taglines, tell you what to say, and then they push and drive stories and things in the media to create this narrative. And for Flores, who and it wants nothing said about him, all of a sudden to have this story come popping up, because I never heard of one word of it, maybe somebody else did, but I never did. And then this happened later. It was a driven story to create a narrative. What is that story? To me, civil war is underway. Full-fledged civil war in the findom is underway. And I think it's good. And I'm going to explain why. Okay, but I'm going to do a Cliff Notes version and dig deeper later on. Now, the first thing we got to say is Flores has responsibility. He's got these OCs. He's fired a lot of offensive line coaches. I had mentioned this in uh, the long form video I did, but I made a major mistake. I fell into the trap of speaking about something without doing the research. I did research why and how these offensive line coaches were removed. And I'll get into the long form, but there's plenty of context there, especially last year's switch to this year's switch that I did not know and I was speaking uh, from the mouth that wasn't here, it was a little down south. 
And I would say that those who are judging uh, Flores in this matter might need that context and they might change their mind. Also on Jean-Pierre, and I can get in, I'm gonna get into that as well. Uh, a very simple, quick on Jean-Pierre, most people don't know we're the seventh most efficient running game in the NFL, yet we run the ball like the 24th. We're the seventh, mo seventh most prolific passing game, and yet we're the 31st most efficient. This is not creating a proper framework for anyone on the offense, and that's the job of the offensive coordinator, or coordinators in, as in, in our situation. But again, these aren't bad guys. We have to dig into, how did they get to this job? How did Flores appoint them? That's something for a, digger, uh, a deeper dive, and we'll get into that. I kind of touched on some of that, but I, th I found some more nuances as I studied and dug. So really, last year's situation, as I spoke of, Tua was inserted early. Clearly, he didn't know the playbook. He said he didn't know the playbook. Gailey, the offensive coordinator, was like told, told after the decision was made, he wasn't involved. Brian Flores said, if I was his father, I wouldn't start him. He's not ready. And a week later, he started. Clearly, none of these players had any reason to insert Tua. It only hurt all of them. Okay? The only two players less left is Ross and Greer. So I'm going to take care of Ross first, deal with him, and see what we see. Now, as I said, I love comments. They're the best. I mean, yeah, you know, you get some, hey, you do a good job, and, you know, some, some funnies, but then you get some really good information. I'm going to use two comments here. The first one is from Kevin uh, Dorsey. He says, part of Ross's current reality is that he has both love and respect for Greer, but in the end, he can't save Greer from himself. Uh, yet, unfortunately, doesn't have it in him to step in and bring it to an end until Greer essentially does himself in. And we have to remember that. When we look at these people, that's what they are. They're humans. They're not machines. Ross came in. Greer, in 2007, was head of college uh, scouts, uh, director of college scouts. And over time, him and Ross have been working together for over a decade. They should have many interactions, especially now. You know, they have a relationship. And Ross, to his credit, when he said, I'm out of football operations, he turned it all over to Greer, somebody he trusted, somebody he knew, somebody who was like him. If you think about it, Brian Flores is like Dan Marino, and Greer is like Ross. They are very similar. I'm sure, look how long it took him to get rid of Gase, who he really liked. Gase is screaming at him, and he's like, oh, I really liked him, you know, he worked so hard. Ross is like a sentimental dude at some point. He's a billionaire, like I said, he's got skeletons, but there's a sentimentality to him. So, Greer overrode him with Minka Fitzpatrick, then had to tra trade Minka Fitzpatrick. Greer brought in Fitzpatrick, uh, uh, Ryan, who screwed the tank, who prevented Miami from having top choice of the quarterbacks. And Greer also said, hey, you know, I want Minka so bad. I'm not willing to trade back and get Lamar. And Ross had won Lamar. He'd uh, relented and said, okay. And then Ross said, I wanted uh, Burrow to worry me because of injury. Marino came out in public and said he wanted Herbert. And now Flores, who I'm sure Ross knew, wanted Herbert as well. So really the main driver of Tua, and this is not a knock on Tua, we're just trying to find the motivation, was Chris Greer, who has a history of poor drafts, missed on Lamar, who lost Minka, the guy he wanted. And then, ultimately, it appears he forced Tua in early, which wasn't good for the kid. The kid didn't know the playbook. Why was he forced in? Obviously, his health wasn't right. He undercut Gailey, who then quit. And now, again, we're a pariah because who wants interfering uh, ownership? 
He made Flores look terrible. Ross would not have put two in and made the power play because Dan Marino, someone he respects, Ross has shown that he idolizes these people. That's why he's got Dan there. He would not put Tua in when the kid wasn't ready. The coach really would say he's not ready. And he was worried about injury history. So if he gets put in early and he gets injured, they're all going to say the owner said he, he had an injury history. Why was he put in? So Ross doesn't look like he's the guy. It had to be Greer. And Brother Bluto uh, put a comment saying that Bobby Greer, Chris Greer's father, also had a history of interfering. And it was one of the reasons why he was kind of moved on from the Patriots. He interfered with Pete Carroll. Some big time players came out and said there was just like an undercutting from uh, certain players and from management to, to Carroll. So this is a repeat. And the fact that Flores revealed this in this recent article that's popped up is clear now that Brian Flores and Chris Greer are totally at odds. And Chris Greer has isolated himself, especially for drafting two picks to get Waddle, who's a good player, but you can see it doesn't matter. If you don't have everything in the right situation, it doesn't matter who you have. It's a team game. So he spent all this capital to get Waddle, and they could have just had Chase, or they could have had Smith, or they could have got a lineman, or whatever. Nothing's working out. Everything was made to push Tua forward, and it was the worst thing for Tua and for this franchise, and it had to come from Greer. And people will say, you know, uh, uh, Tua is a bust, and this and that. Hey, Drew Brees was a bust too, right? That guy was a terrible quarterback. Go look at his first three seasons. Go look. He didn't really take off till his fourth season. He didn't have the injury, and he had a great framework. The Chargers were a great framework. I believe it was Marty Schottenheimer. Tua, I'm not saying he's elite. I'm not saying he's going to be Herbert or Burrow, who I didn't like Herbert. I thought I was worried about his you know, personality. I believe the media hype. Burrow, I was totally honest. This guy's going to be great. But whatever ceiling Tua has, whatever that is, it has been highly diminished, and it started with Chris Greer because Gailey would have been a great asset for him. Even if Fitzpatrick came back this year and next year, and then the following year, Tua started after he was totally healed, totally got a playbook. But this all stems from Greer. And the good news, here's the good news, the Civil War. Brian Flores, when you look at the context of him moving the coaches out, of, the, of, of who he is, a totally fresh-faced head coach who really couldn't get much more because we were an undesirable location, came in with a bunch of guppy coaches, lost, you know, Caldwell because of sickness. And then he got Gailey, and Gailey came here for him and all the reasons, but it was because Flores showed so much. And then Flores had to put to it in, which let Gailey go. And now he had to have the three OCs. You know, Charlie Fry calling him plays and uh, uh, Godsey in the boot and Stuttersville run the run game. This is not conducive for him. Just like Tua was screwed, so was Flores. Goes back to Greer. But the good news is, through all of this, people see, not like you and me, the people in the know that are talking. Ross was an interfering coach. He had a guy he gave total power to that he had respect for and liked and had relented in the past. And despite everything else, his own concerns, Dan Marino's concerns, the head coach's concerns, he allowed Greer to do whatever he wanted. That says to future GMs, this guy has changed. He's turned over a new leaf. If I go there, I'm going to get the same treatment. Then there's Brian Flores, who is definitely respected. I mean, look what he's got to work with. And look what he's done. So to me... Civil War means Chris Greer, barring some tear of victories that could forestall his utter incompetence being revealed and being exiled from the Findom, uh, will be removed. Ross will stay. Marino will stay. Marvin Allen, I, I can't figure it out. I'd like to dig into that, but it's so hard. You can't, you have to be in the know for that. Chris Greer uh, is clearly 
been a long-standing issue. Brian Flores, to me, I like him. Just, I mean, 2019, I think he was the sixth most disciplined team in the NFL. 2019. I think he was third in last year. He's a good coach. And he's young, and he has had so much things against him. Imagine if Gailey came back, and Fitzpatrick came back one year, and you still had two a year, getting trained right, getting the cerebral portions right, having a high-end coach like that. What would we have seen? And it all comes back to Chris Greer. Chris Greer will, look, infections, sometimes they take two trips to the doctor to get out of it, two doses. From the moment Dan Marino was stripped of audibles from Jimmy Johnson, there was dysfunction all the way through. So a second trip to the doctor. Unfortunately, Chris Greer wasn't removed and a new GM wasn't put in, but it's not about that. It's where we are now. And I think it's very clear to Ross. I think it's very clear to everybody what the final piece of the puzzle is to find success. And that is get rid of Chris Greer. And I think these new stories point to it. And I think there is going to be future forward. Some of this is opinion. Some of this is hope. But I hope you enjoyed. This is Curtis. Thank you for staying to the end. Uh, please uh, like, comment, subscribe. Comments mean the most. I'm not a guru. I'm just a fan. You know? I got my opinions. I'm willing to change. Listen to you. I learn. It's a team effort. I really believe that. Uh, so comments mean the most. Uh, subscriptions and likes help with our Google overlords. And Ace Barrett, our sponsor. This wouldn't be happening without them. Want to let you know with their world-class software, you can get it in on the action with friends, family, coworkers, everyone you know. With the, you know, with the world-class software, they're just the best. They're the best. Wouldn't happen without them. Wouldn't happen without you. Appreciate everything. So does Curtis. Thank you. Catch you next time. Be well.